Hello, and welcome back. Today, I'm giving you 10 quick tips and tricks to help you out with using Tinkercad. Some of these are things I wish I had known from the beginning, and some of these I literally just learned. I'm constantly learning new things with the more advanced and in-depth designs that I'm making, and learning how to make the steps easier to accomplish what I'm designing. And it always makes for a better experience in the long run. For example, simply aligning things. When I first started using Tinkercad, I would align by eye, which, while it can be done, it is time-consuming. And time is precious. <laughs> then I learned that there's an alignment tool that takes care of that for you. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go over all these buttons. Never being one to read the manual, I skipped over these and wasted a lot of time because of it. Okay, so starting from left to right, we have our copy and paste buttons, duplicate and repeat, trash, and finally, the back and forward step arrows. And if we move over here on the right side, we have notes visibility, show all, group and ungroup, the alignment tool, and the mirror tool. So a quick rundown of what these buttons do. The copy and paste is pretty self-explanatory, but did you know you can open one of your other projects, click an item in there and copy it, then go back to your current project and paste it? Moving on to the duplicate and repeat tool. This is very handy if you're making a repeated pattern. As long as you don't click off of what you want to duplicate, you can repeat the pattern as much as you want until you come up with a design that you like. And if you don't like the design you've just made, our next button comes in really handy, the trash can. Wait a minute, maybe you're being too hard on yourself and you do like that design after all. Thankfully, the next button is an undo button. Well, looking at it again, uh, yeah, it's trash. So let's click that redo button. Next, on the right side, we have our Notes Visibility button, which, unless you have a terrible memory or are sharing your design with someone else, you won't be using this too much. But you can add a note by clicking and dragging this Notes button to your design and typing whatever you want. And you can hide it with the Visibility button or click the trash can and delete it altogether. Next up is our Show All button. If you click an object and select the Hide button within its parameters, you can show it again easily with the click of this button. Then we have our Group and Ungroup buttons, which are pretty self-explanatory. Next, we have our Alignment tool for keeping these pesky little objects in line with a couple clicks of the mouse. And finally, we have our Mirror tool for easily flipping your design from one direction to the other. If you find yourself working on the side of an object, for example, let's say we want to put a word on the side of this cube. We can grab our text and flip it upright and resize it and then move it over to our cube, and after a handful of clicks, we can achieve what we want. But a quicker way to do that would be to grab the work plane and place it on the side of the cube that we want our text on, and then we can simply resize our text, and we're done. This is an easy one to overlook, yet easy to figure out if you just take a minute to figure out the object rotation arrows and how they work. This took me forever to figure out because I would just grab and go, but if you click and hold and stay within this circle, you will snap to an angle. But if you move outside of this circle, you can fine tune your angle. Ah, that's nice, huh? Okay, first off, if we hold the shift key and grab one of these measurement blocks and we pull it in one way or the other, our object will resize automatically on all sides. You can also let go of the mouse button and type a size and all sides will go up or down the same amount you've changed it to. Another thing we can do while holding the shift key is move in a straight line, either left or right or up and down, like a plus sign on the X or Y axis. Now if you want to fine-tune your movements, you can click an object and use your arrow keys to move it around. 
Maybe you've got a wandering mouse hand. <laughs> Dependent on what your snap grid is set to, by default it is one millimeter, so one click of the arrow key is one millimeter moved up, down, left, or right. Okay, this is something I've recently learned, and I don't know why this works this way, but for whatever reason in Tinkercad, it just does. So let's say you're trying to make a rectangle with rounded corners. Let's start by grabbing a box and make it 100 millimeters by 50 millimeters. If we grab our radius slider in the shape parameters and turn it up, the corners don't round very well. You can see kind of flat and goofy looking. If this were a square and not a rectangle, it wouldn't look this bad. One easy way I've figured out how to get around this is by using the shape parameters to set the size instead of resizing with the boxes around the object. So if we change this block to 100 millimeters by 50 millimeters on these sliders, and then turn the radius up, we have what I was wanting in the first place. A rectangle with rounded corners. Again, I'm not sure why this is like this, but it's just one of those caveats of using Tinkercad. Also, while we're in the shape parameters, are you finding that your holes aren't quite circular? Are they looking like more of an icosagon? Grab that slider that says sides and turn it all the way up, and voila, a hexaconta tetragon. All right, so over here in the shape pane on the right, if we click this drop down menu, we have a ton of different libraries full of shapes. There's a ton of different shapes in here, so I suggest going through this and checking out as much as possible. You can use them to create something great, or you might find some inspiration for designing something of your own. While we're on the shapes pane, let's take a look at the featured selection. From here, we can grab any shape and drop it on the canvas as usual, but in the parameters, we have something that looks a little different. You can see the shape with all these circles and squares surrounding it. We can use those circles and squares to make our own shape. As you can see, after just a few clicks, this kind of looks like a guitar pick. And we can still edit the object the same way we would any other, but this is just a fun little way to make custom shapes, or organic shapes as some call them. Often, long before I jump into Tinkercad, I jot down ideas and shapes of what I want to design. I'm clearly not a good artist by any means, but it's a good enough starting point. You can also get all your measurements written down and have them at the ready for when you are building your design in Tinkercad. It just saves time in the overall building process. Now, for those who have watched my past videos, you've seen how I make these simple countersink holes for screws using two different size cylinders, but there is another way that I don't often use. It makes more of the traditional countersink hole that you're all familiar with. So to do that, we're going to first grab a cylinder, turn the sides all the way up, and let's just make this six millimeters. Next, we're going to grab the cone shape, turn those sides all the way up as well, and then let's flip it over. Let's give this a 12 millimeter radius and shrink the height down a little bit. Now if we align it to the center of our cylinder and turn this into a hole and group those, what we have is your traditional countersink shape and we can use that instead of the double cylinder trick that I often use. Now the last thing I'm going to leave you with is this. If we go to the main page after you log into Tinkercad and we click on the learn link up here on the top right, we're presented with a page titled Learn How to Tinker. In here you'll find a lot about how to use Tinkercad. They have starters, lessons, and projects you can create with step-by-step -step guides that will get you started on creating your own designs. I highly, highly suggest checking these out. I actually skipped over these as I said I'm not usually one to read the manual, it's just my nature. <laughs> But I suggest if you're just not getting it, you know, any other way, try these out. If I'd have just taken the time to go through these, I'd have figured out a lot of this stuff a lot sooner. All right, and that's all I've got for today. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. To all my old and new subscribers, I appreciate you tuning in. Catch you in the next one. And as always, have the best day ever. Is one millimeter moved up? Is one millimeter moved? Is one millimeter moved up?
You can use them to create. You can use them to create something great, or you might find some inspiration and in you can use them for something. God damn it. This is very handy if you're making a.